Welcome to Tales from Tech Support, Mechanics Edition. That's right, even automotive mechanics deal with some crazy mistakes and blunders. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got some stories for you. Priuses don't need oil. An older lady bought a Prius. One day it had thrown a cell and started driving like crap, so she took it to the dealer to be fixed. The mechanics started on it and they found the problem. So they asked her when the last time was she had the oil changed and her response was, Never! The Prius doesn't have a motor, so why would I do that? The engine was shot from never having an oil change. Bowling ball! Customer comes in complaining of a heavy clunking when stopping and the same clunk when moving from a stop. There was a bowling ball in the trunk. So much fail. MPG fail. A woman brought her car in complaining of high fuel consumption. She claims she was getting far under the spec description of 44 miles per gallon. After plugging her car in with the reader and getting no faults, I performed a visual inspection but found nothing. The O2 sensors were brand new, as was the car with less than 2,000 miles on it. Upon asking the customer how she knew it was drinking too much fuel, the answer tickled me pink. She told me the MPG dial on the car kept going up and down, sometimes as low as 10 miles per gallon depending on how fast she was going. I gently explained that average miles per gallon and real-time MPG reader are two different things, and actually changing to her average MPG dial showed 40 miles per gallon overall. She became irate and claimed I was trying to fleece her. This went on for an hour before she left. I heard from one of our sales team that she had phoned them the next day asking for a refund on her purchase. Mysterious rattling sound. I had a car come into my shop a few years back, complaining of rattling when driving. Three road tests later, we find the bearings, brakes, steering, and suspension components all good. Exhaust was solid. Turns out the rattling was from the plastic hubcaps. Some of the clips had started to break and when driving, the cap would shift and rattle on the wheel. We explain to the customer and ask if they want to buy a new set, take them off, or just leave it as is. They decline the new ones and want the caps on, so we just put it all back together, charge them for the inspection and send them on their way. Five minutes later they're back complaining that it's still rattling. Common Sense Failure I replaced the clutch in a car for a woman, then returned her car. By the time I got back to the workshop, there was a message waiting for me that she couldn't get the car into gear. This was before mobile phones. I was driven back to her house where she stood waiting for me, looking like she was ready to murder someone. I got in the car, started it up, foot on the clutch, into first and drove it around the block, up and down through every gear. She apologized and off we went back to the workshop. Once more, only to get the same woman on the phone. This time, not just a little angry, but screaming all kinds of curses at us. Back we went to her house, and you guessed it. Started the car, put it into gear, and drove around the block again. This time, instead of leaving, we told her to try before we left. She jumped in, started the car, and crunched the gears hard and loud. It was at this point that the penny finally dropped. I'm almost six foot tall. This woman was about four foot five. She didn't move her seat forward, so was only pressing the clutch pedal a quarter of the way down. After explaining this to her, I got an earful of abuse from her saying that she didn't even know that her car seat could move, so how was she supposed to adjust it? Oh, and she would be writing to the newspapers to tell everyone about the bad service she got from our garage. <laughs> fluid fail. You mean there's different holes for every fluid? Not a mechanic, but I took a couple of semesters of automotive classes in college. We would work on random people's cars who didn't have the money to pay for parts and labor. One lady had her car towed in because it was making weird noises. We checked a few basic things first, then started it to see what the noise sounded like, and the exhaust system spit out a whole bunch of nasty sludge and smoke but wouldn't actually run. Turns out, she thought the opening to add gas was the opening to add everything. When she first started having problems, she dumped oil, antifreeze, brake fluid, and windshield washer fluid in there to make sure it wasn't running low on fluids. Oh my gosh. 
inside out. Speaking of co-workers, during my apprenticeship, myself and the other mechanics went for a tea break, leaving the more greener apprentice to finish putting the wheels back on a car and parking it on the forecourt. He shouts to us in the canteen asking, how did you get this car on the ramps? It's too wide. I looked down into the workshop and called the others over to see he put the steel wheels on inside out. Oh my. Many Porsche fails. Porsche? Porsche. Porsche? You decide. Number one. Customer dropped her new iPhone under the passenger seat of her 911 and it slipped under the carpet and into the sheet metal of the car. I got the phone out, all the while being complained at about how it better not be scratched. She's not paying, and we need to call Germany to tell them it's a design flaw. Number two. Customer says at 3000 RPM, his 911 Turbo sounds completely different than his Ferrari at 3000 RPM. So clearly there is something wrong with his 911 Turbo. Number three, Cayenne owner says the car pulls. On the test drive, I find the car doesn't pull, but the steering wheel is 90 degrees off. I raise the car up and see the bent tie rod. Then the customer bitches us out about how it should be under warranty and that he never hit anything. Yeah, right. Dirty Burger Lady came in with her two kids and her few month old MDX. RO said customer states very foul odor coming from interior. Check and advise. Mind you, this was the peak of summer, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit that day. Tech next to me was thinking, hmm, defective catalytic converter? Nope. The smell began to waft through the entire shop. It smelled like death. The car was otherwise clean inside. He continued to look around, yes, wearing a mask. Looked under the middle row seat and found a pound of hamburger, jammed underneath with an expiration date of about three months prior, with live maggots protruding out of the packaging. She actually tried to get insurance to cover checkout time and a full interior detail for that. From what I remember, her insurance agent laughed out loud at the request. I couldn't eat a hamburger for like six months after that. I bet. Ugh. Rotate your tires and your assistance. Recently, I had all four tires changed on my car. This was due to general wear and tear. I had done my research on the brand and went to my nearest garage to have them fitted. Upon phoning, I was told that I did not need to pre-order as they always kept that brand in stock. A few weeks later, my back tire began to slowly deflate. I found a nail in the tire. And as there was construction near my workplace, I realized I needed a new tire. It sucked, but it was no one's fault, apart from the construction site, and I did phone to let them know. I journeyed to the garage to get my back tire replaced. Instantly, the assistant told me they did not sell the type of tires I wanted, and instead tried to upsell me on several options. A good 50 pounds more than my brand. I was told over and over that they just didn't sell my brand. Confused, I asked to speak to the manager, only to be told he was at another location. Unable to get through to the guy, and combined with the fact that I could physically see the tires I wanted through the window, I decided to Google the other mechanic and speak to the manager directly. As soon as I greeted the manager, the assistant wildly began typing and claimed to have found a deal on this brand, and that he had miraculously found some in the warehouse. I turned my back and left, speaking to the manager as I went. He was furious and offered to replace my back tire for a severely discounted rate, which I took him up on the next day. The assistant wasn't there when I went back. Tried to vacuum the gas out of a beetle. I had an old army buddy that I was a mechanic with tell me he used to work in a VW shop in North Carolina. Some guy had a wreck with his VW bug and left it at the shop he worked at. A couple hours later, the guy comes back to get his stuff out of the car and asks if they have a vacuum in the shop he can use. My friend pointed to the one centrally in the shop and said, have at it. My friend left the general area and heard the guy switch on the vacuum. Then about 30 to 60 seconds later, he hears this explosion in the middle of the shop and the guy who had the end of the vacuum running around like he had his head chopped off. Comes to find out that the idiot was trying to siphon gas out of his wrecked VW and thought that using a vacuum would be a good idea. Till the gas fumes hit the electric motors inside the vacuum. Genius! Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little change up. I still consider it Tales from Tech Support. I haven't seen anything on Reddit specifically like this, but 
Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Hey, and if you made it this far, you are a rock star. Might as well click the like and subscribe button, right? Right?